When you hear the term Mountain Dew, your first thought is this drink, right? Well, if you would have asked the average person about 100 years ago what Mountain Dew was, you would have got a much different answer. So let's dive into this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Our story begins with two brothers, Barney and Allie Hartman. But first, let's start with their dad, Bernard. He was born in Germany and he immigrated to America in 1880 when he was about 10 years old. Well, he settled in Illinois, he married Agnes, and they had five kids. When he's 30 years old here in 1900, he's a dairyman. Ten years later, he's running a saloon. Now the children that we're interested in for this story is Bernard Jr., also known as Barney, who's his eldest son, and then Aloysius, otherwise known as Allie, his youngest son. When we get to the 1920 census, we're still in Illinois, one of the questions on the census asks, what is your tongue? And Bernard, the dad, says German, so he's still speaking German in this census. He's a keeper of a saloon and a rooming house at this point, and his wife Agnes is a clerk there. The oldest son, Bernard, Barney, is a traveling salesman for a soft drink company. Ali is 17, so he's not showing as having a job yet. So Barney, I guess his traveling soft drink salesman career, took him to Georgia because in 1923, Barney left his family and he and his wife were in Augusta and he's a manager of a Orange Crush bottling company. By 1925, his little brother Ali is here bottling with him. It says Ali is residing at the YMCA. Hmm. 1930, Barney is still manager of Orange Crush, and Allie is assistant manager. By 1932, they both have moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, and they are running an Orange Crush plant there. Two years later, in 1934, Allie has gotten married to Pauline and is vice president of Orange Crush now, and Barney is the president and treasurer. 1935 is the same thing, but I'd like to point out that history calls Aloysius Allie, but in all of these directories, he's listed as Alois. Anyways, in 1936, we see a change here. Now they are president and vice president of Hartman Beverage Company. So this 1936 newspaper talks about how beer sales are double what they were last year at Hartman Beverage Company. So apparently they might have dropped Orange Crush to sell beers. Now I needed to be refreshed on the prohibition dates. So just in case anyone else did too, Prohibition ended in 1933. So in December 1936, it's talking about how Hartman Beverage is a distributor for Hudapol beer, and that Hudapol Brewing Company was installing a pasteurizing machine there. I had never heard of Hudapol beer, but it continues to say that Hudapol Brewing Company is one of the oldest breweries in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they're still in business today. In 1937, the Hartman brothers had to get the city to rezone their building from an apartment to a commercial zoning. They are doing pretty well at this point and ended up expanding their plant. More on that in a minute. Now this was interesting. Throughout the pages of the entire newspaper this day, different companies are congratulating them on the expansion. They are just peppered throughout all the pages of today's paper. This shows a picture of Barney at his desk, and the picture to the right of him is a photo of Allie at his desk. His secretary is sitting next to him. The article also shows their fleet of new trucks sitting in a new garage that they recently added. So the address is 1921 Magnolia Avenue in Knoxville, Tennessee. The building still stands. It looks like no one's using it right now. There's also a plaque in front of the building, and this is that plaque. So, as far as I can see, they are only producing and distributing beers at this time. Now, I've never heard of burger beer. Have you? We haven't seen the switch back to the soft drinks yet. Now, in this 1940 census, Barney has three daughters. I'm having a hard time finding Allie's census for this year since they spell his name differently a lot. But I did learn that Allie did have two sons, and I don't think he had any more children. I just found all kinds of neat things in the papers, so I'm just going to put a few of them in here 
Here is a 1940 article stating that Hartman Beverage Company has partnered with a new beer company, Stag Beer. Here's Allie and here's Barney in this photo. A few months later in 1941, Hartman has selected some new GMC delivery trucks. That's quite a lot of trucks. Notice there's a Pepsi Cola sign there and the caption reads, the new large fleet of General Motors trucks pictured above are now on duty delivering Pepsi Cola to your favorite dealer. Okay, so now we see that they're distributing beer and soft drinks at this point. Maybe they were doing that all along, I don't know. In 1946, here's a couple Hartman ads featuring Paps Beer. So I found no newspapers to back up the stories that I found online, but the stories say that Barney and Allie came up with the formula for Mountain Dew somewhere around 1940. So the brothers would have been about 40 and 45 at this time. The legend has it that the brothers enjoyed this lemon lime beverage called Natural Setup. They decided to make their own version of it, and supposedly they used it to mix with their drinks for themselves and their family and friends. It initially wasn't rolled out commercially. Apparently it didn't taste like the Mountain Dew that we know today. It was more like a 7-Up or a Sprite. They jokingly called it Mountain Dew, a reference to moonshine. They even had one of their friends draw up a hillbilly character. But it wasn't until 1948 that they decided to get a trademark for it. This patent from 1953 states that they've been using this trademark since September 24, 1948. So while I was looking for the term Mountain Dew in old Google books, I came across this 1905 court document that says, this appeal is from the denial of registration to the words Mountain Dew as a trademark for whiskey. It was denied on the grounds that Mountain Dew is a term commonly applied to and descriptive of whiskey. It goes on to say, it is common knowledge that the term Mountain Dew means whiskey and is defined in the Century, Worcester, Webster, and Standard Dictionary as follows. Mountain Dew, whiskey, especially Highland whiskey. So that was 1905. I found one of those dictionary entries published in 1900. I just thought it was interesting. Here's a portion of a poem found in this 1925 wildlife book one stanza of this poem says, Mountains, rugged mountains, I'll go with my girl of the mountain trail, and we'll take my jug of Mountain Dew, and I'll tell the man in the moon the secrets that I know about you. So in generations past, Mountain Dew was a well-known whiskey term. And I never knew that, did you guys? It's kind of interesting that they were able to trademark the words Mountain Dew for a drink that's not whiskey. So what about this? In 1926, there was a Smoky Mountain Dew candy bar. That's interesting. Okay, so let's get back on track. So they patented the Mountain Dew in 1948. Well, the following year, Barney died. He died just a few days after his 54th birthday on May 15th. He had been having heart troubles for a few years, and it says he enjoyed golfing and fishing. It says he was a real likable guy. It says he had been confined to his bed for the last six weeks, but he had been feeling much better and was talking of getting back to the office. He was up eating breakfast, having conversations, when he just suddenly died. Isn't it interesting how many times we have heard people up eating breakfast and then just suddenly died? I can think of a few offhand through these stories. Now get this, his mom, Agnes, just died 10 days earlier on May 5th. Then, two days after Barney died, his dad died on May 17th. Three deaths in two weeks. Poor Allie just got it all at once. So Allie ends up taking over as president of the Hartman Beverage Company, as we see here in the 1950 census. We see his two sons here are 15 and 12. In one of the boys' obituaries, it does mention that the boys did work at the plant with their dad for some time. Sources say that Hartman Beverage Company was sold in 1957. I'm not really sure. This 1957 article mentions that the vice president is now a Joe Baker, so I assume Allie is still the president, but I'm not sure. Skipping ahead to 1970, Aloysius was killed when he attempted to drive across a train track and the train crashed into his car, throwing the car 130 feet and throwing Allie from the car. He was 69. Now at some point the beverage company was bought by the Tip Corporation. 
and a guy named Bill Jones of the Tip Corporation refined the formula again in 1961. Apparently by this point, the formula had already been modified a few times. So then, in 1964, the Mountain Dew brand was acquired by the Pepsi-Cola company and it took the regional Mountain Dew and made it international. In 1965, Pepsi launched its first ad campaign, Yahoo! Mountain Dew, It'll Tickle Your Innards. So let's talk about the bottles. For all of us that have those green bottles with the ACL with the hillbilly, here's mine. They cannot be dated any earlier than 1965. The words, it'll tickle your innards, was only printed on the bottle in 1965. Now, if you have bottles that say, filled by so-and-so, those can hold some value, depending on whose name is on them. Those are more sought after by collectors. Now, there's a story about how the Hartmans ordered bottles in 1951 for Mountain Dew, but didn't end up using them until 1955. Now, I can't find any example of what those particular bottles look like, so I have no idea if they were embossed or if they were ACL, paper labels, I have no idea. I also have a textured embossed green bottle, and I can't find much about this one, but I do see a 67 at the bottom of it, so I guess I'm just going to assume that it's from 1967, but I don't have anything to back that up. So you guys know how much I'm a sucker for old commercials, the cheesier the better. So I have a couple of those to leave with you, and that's all I've got for today guys. We'll see you on the next one, thanks for watching. Oh, beautiful Sal was a stone-hearted gal, refusing to bill or to coo. But Clem was right smart, he appealed to her heart with that gal getting good old Mountain Dew. Yahoo! Mountain Dew! <coughs> Mountain Dew will tickle your innards, cause there's a bang in every bottle. At the county turkey shoot, cause Luke warn't worth a hoot. He was hopeless till he finally took the cue. Yahoo! Mountain Dew! Now he shoots off the cup, gets more than enough after nipping at that good old Mountain Dew. Sure is shooting, there's a bang in every bottle of our delicious soft drink, Mountain Dew. It'll tickle your innards.